What's the word, y'all? The 2022 NBA Draft just wrapped up, and it was it was interesting. I will say that winners and losers in the title, those are buzzwords to get people to click. I didn't watch a lick of college basketball this season. I didn't do a lick of research on any prospects. So if you clicked on this video wondering how the 12th overall pick is going to fit with your favorite team, I'm sorry, you're in the wrong spot, but thank you for clicking the video anyway. Um, I just got home. I was invited by the Chicago Bulls to do this like um, watch party, NBA Draft watch party. It was amazing. Every time I work with the Bulls or they invite me to something i'm always amazed at the levels that they take these things so i want to say thank you to the chicago bulls for inviting me out i got to have a full 30 minute conversation with tony kukoc organically by the way it wasn't like it was scheduled kenny sit here kukoc sit here we just organically had a conversation and i'm saying this right now on this show tony kukoc is now my favorite bull of all time because he was the coolest dude of all time like we talked everything from nba finals we talked nba draft we talked history of basketball we just talked overall philosophy that he likes in the game of ba tony kukoc real deal shout out to tony anyway just to let you know how bad i am when it comes to college basketball organically when i'm there we're watching the draft and somebody said who was the national championship game between again and, and i didn't have the answer so so yeah winners and losers is definitely a stretch i will say though i was low-key there was one different thing one thing that i was disappointed in we had the crazy crazy uh new york knicks trade where whoa just reporting one thing shams is reporting the other thing and they were both right that was a dub that was a lit hilarious but i felt like there were supposed to be way more trades the way Woj was talking over the last 48 hours on tv he made it seem like it was about to be a bloodbath rudy gobert deleted every single utah jazz post on his instagram so i'm thinking boom he out the dough and the, the draft just wrapped and nothing has happened kevin durant might be on the move carrie irvin got a short list so there's a lot of rumors going on around the league malcolm brogda was attached to some stuff john collar's name was thrown around and and there was no big names traded the only name that was traded was kimball Walker. Walker, if I'm not mistaken, and he about to get bought out from, from Detroit. We got picks trades for sure, you know, picks traded, but like no names traded. Now, I know things can change over the you know next couple weeks, and I'm sure they will, but draft day just seems like the perfect day to make those trades because now, let's say, hypothetically, the Chicago Bulls were going to make a trade, and the guy we drafted, Dalen Terry, was going to be in the trade. We just gave this man a whole day of social media, welcome to the Bulls, and we shipping him away a, a day later. This is why you need to do those trades before you make the pick. Because now the fan base, if you go to uh, Dale and Terry YouTube highlights, it's like, welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. We, we can't throw him in a trade to get Kevin Durant anymore. JK, you know, Kevin, if you want to come, you know, we, we a shit bro out the dough. Either way, let's talk about the draft. So we started off very early. The, the drama, the chaos, because for the better part of the last week or so, the world thought that Jabari Smith Jr. was going first overall. And then just early this morning, it switched, where at least in Vegas odds, it flipped to Paolo Benchero. And now people are trying to figure out what what is, what is Vegas now? Know that we don't know there was a big amount of money put on ba Paolo Benchero something has to be up even Woj tweeted Woj got something wrong now that I'm thinking aloud he tweeted this morning it's the first thing I saw on my phone um things are looking like it's gonna be one Jabari two Chad and three Paolo and you know Woj can't necessarily say selecting first overall because he's got the contract with ESPN so he beat around the bus on the top of the list um they're thinking about boom 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 so when he tweeted that this morning it felt like that was set in stone because it's Woj. And then last minute, the Orlando Magic said, nah, we've been bluffing this whole time. We're going to go with Ben Chero. And a lot of things changed just like that. The only thing that stayed the same is that it felt like OKC knew that they wanted Chet Holmgren. It didn't matter who was that, who was available. Chet was their dude, and they got that. So we got this flip of Ben Chero going to Orlando, and now we got Jabari Smith Jr. going to to Houston and take this clip as you as you want. But this is a funny clip of the draft. Bro did not seem happy. Um, and you can just say, listen, he was nervous because he's in the NBA draft uh, green room. And, uh, you know, what I'm saying you never know what's going to happen. Or you can be like, dang, not saying that Houston is a bad place. But like I was projected to go one and now I'm going three. I don't know the money difference between the picks, but I promise you there is a money difference. But I do. I do love the core that the Houston Rockets got. I'm guessing Jabari Smith Jr. going to be a stud. Of Again, I don't really know, but I, I think he'll have a lot of fun in Houston either way. And then we get to number four, where Keegan Murray was drafted. Now, uh, Jaden Ivey decided that he did not want to get drafted to the Sacramento Kings, which seems like pretty much a sentiment uh, for prospects over the last couple seasons. There's only been a few in recent history that I can vividly remember saying that, yes, I want to go to, to Sacramento. That was Tyrese Halliburton. That was De'Aaron Fox. And one of them, they traded away. So Keegan Murray gets drafted number four. I've heard a vast 
vast, diff- vast different uh, opinions about this at number four. He's one of the oldest players in the draft, if not the oldest player in the draft. One of the oldest lottery picks in recent history behind like uh, Chris Dunn or top five picks, not lottery picks, top five picks behind like Chris Dunn um, and things like that. But with the Sacramento Kings being in the position that they are in and they're saying, oh, we want to try to go and make a playoff push. I hear that he is the most NBA ready out of everybody. Maybe the ceiling not a- is not as high, but I keep hearing that he's NBA ready, NBA ready, NBA ready. Um, So W pick, L pick, only time will tell. This is one thing I don't like about this this time in the NBA draft. It's cool to have these uh, draft rankings and grades and things like that, but immediately seeing, oh, we missed the pick when bro ain't even laced up his sneakers for your favorite team just yet. It's crazy to me. Now, I understand every every fan, with, if when I had, when the Bulls had a top four pick um, in the draft where we got Patrick Williams, I was doing my due diligence, right? And I had fell in love with a certain prospect. So when he wasn't drafted fourth overall, I was like, dang, what the heck? Boo, 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 boo. But I ain't immediately right off Patrick Williams. And and for you at, at home wondering who that guy was that I fell in love with in the draft, it was uh, Denny Abdiya. So, Daniel Dia fell to, like, what, number nine to Washington. Patrick Williams is drafted number four. And both of them have showed flashes one way or another. I do love Patrick Williams, though, even though I would ship him out for the right trade. I'm just going to say that, Chicago. Keep your eyes open. Which means that number five is Jaden Ivey. Now, Jaden Ivey is actually a guy that I, not that I know him personally, but a guy that I've, I've seen a lot of footage on, and I like his game. I hate the fact that that I knew that he was going to be compared to John Moran. One of the best and worst things about this draft was Kendrick Perkins. The best because I just had a lot of fun seeing what his draft comparisons were, but the worst because I had to see what his draft comparisons were. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I like the idea of having like Jay Billis, if anybody, Jay Billis be the guy to do the team comps or the player comps because I know for sure he's watching these games and watching these prospects and doing his due diligence. And you can tell from very early on, on Kitchick Perkins is not a college basketball guy. That is okay. But like, why give him the keys to do these things? Chad Holmgren, what did they, what did he say? Poor Zingas slash Giannis at that a Kumpo? I mean, if you have Porzingis and Giannis that Kumpo together, that is the one of the greatest players of all time. Now I understand they mean shades of, shades of, but still it was it was weird. I forget who was drafted. And um he said Ozi and Obi. And I was like, that feels like a that feels weird, right? And I asked the dude next to me who's actually like a guy that knows the drive. He's like, yeah, I don't I don't see Ozi and Obi at all. So having Kendrick Perkins have these outlandish comparisons, we're gonna look back on them in 10 years and be like, damn, he's probably wrong on every single one of them. Um, but hey. Jaden Ive gets drafted fifth overall, and I like the backcourt of him and Kay Cunningham. From everything I've read and everything I heard, people are saying that, man, we love Jaden Ivey, but we feel like he needs a point guard next to him that's going to settle some things down, that's going to be the real facilitator. You don't want him to jump into a role where he's got the ball in his hands 24-7 because that can that can age him very, very poorly or have him not be the person that he could potentially be, and he's playing with Kay Cunningham. What? He's playing with Kay Cunningham, and all the rumors that I have seen, they're trying to go heavy after DeAndre Aiden. They traded away um, Jeremy Grant, something that a lot of people wanted me to make a video about, Jeremy Jeremy Grant getting traded for the 20 something overall pick or whatever the hell it was. Um, and I didn't make a video because I was going to make this video where we could talk about it. I like the trade for the Pistons now that I know that even going all the way back to the trade deadline last season, nobody was giving up high quality picks for Jeremy Grant. That's what I read in The Athletic. It has to be credible, right? Not necessarily. But The Athletic said back in February when they were trying to get trade offers before the trade deadline, they couldn't get a pick or get a package that was even better than this. So I was under the impression that Jeremy Grant was going to be somewhat uh, valuable in the sense that like the seventh overall pick Portland Trailblazers I thought that that was on the table for Jeremy Grant and I highly highly overestimated his value I highly highly overestimated Christian Wood's value and I probably will highly highly overestimate John Collins's value if he is traded we are learning that the, where the market sets the price in the price for Christian Wood is relatively low and if you ask me Christian Wood Jeremy Grant who's better who's worse it doesn't matter they're on this relatively same tier of player you know what I'm saying so uh they got rid of him and basically got just the picks back opened up this big old exception opened up the salary cap space for them to potentially go out there and get a DeAndre Aiden which I would be super interested in to see this core of Kay Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, DeAndre Aiden, Sadiq Bay, and they also picked up another big down the line. It might have been Jalen Duran. 
Um, I really like the Detroit Pistons and what they did in this draft, so shout out to them. But then again, take that with a grain of salt, Pistons fans. I don't know a damn thing. Next, we got the Indiana Pacers took Benedict Matherin. Um, some are saying that he was the second best player on Arizona behind the Chicago Bulls pick. Um, uh, Jalen, Jalen, Jaden, Ter- what is his name? Dalen Terry. Dalen Terry. No, I'm joking. He was he was the best player on the team. Um, and apparently he was really good. Don't know much about him, but I'm excited to see him. It seems like Tyrese Halliburton was super excited to have him in Indiana, and I'm more curious about what Indiana does next with some of the other pieces they got. One of the biggest question marks in all of the draft is Shaden Sharp because bro ain't really hooped ever, um, at least in the last couple of years. Every single picture you're going to see of him. Actually, let me show you how crazy this is. For myself, just to keep up with the draft orders we talk about this video, you're going to see um, Paolo Benchero, game jersey, um, Chet, game jersey, game jersey, game jersey, game jersey, game jersey. Jersey warm ups. <laughs> warm-ups. A layup lines was kind of busting, and he the seventh overall pick because the layup lines was crazy. No, nah, but from my understanding, Shaden Sharp's upside is insane. Obviously, it's hard to project, especially since he hasn't really played um, professional basketball or high-level basketball in a year or so, but we knew before the draft that that Damian Lillard really loved his game. We even saw Dame talk about it, so they got their their guy. I'm very curious to see what the rest of this um, offseason looks like for them because I was super under the impression that they were going to move this pick to continue this this pseudo um, retooling. I guess it's not pseudo. It's a real retooling when they already got Jeremy Grant, like trade that seventh overall pick for something, and maybe nothing was out there. But having a guy that hasn't played basketball in, in a year, and then you also have uh, Damian Lillard, like the timelines are completely different and they might be trying to do the thing where we try to compete right now, but also grow these younger talents, and it's extremely hard to do that thing. I will say it's extremely, extremely hard to do that. Dyson Daniels, a, a lot of people love him. I don't know anything about him. Did not watch G League Ignite, um, but from the highlights I saw of his passing, I mean, they lost Lonzo Ball, they traded Lonzo Ball to Chicago, and maybe Dyson is a few years away. But if he can be the playmaker that he looked like he can be with having Brandon Ingram and having Zion Williamson, that could be a crazy, crazy pick, a pick that we look back on and be like, man, they won the draft. But again, I don't really know much, but I just know uh, playmaking upside is huge on the team like the Pelicans that basically didn't have any authentic point guard play. I liked point Zion a ton, by the way. I want to see a lot of point Zion this season. But like CJ was running a lot of the point guards this season. Brandon Ingram has playmaking chops. But if they can get a real guy that can be the playmaker, the facilitator, duh. Jeremy Sohan, don't know a damn thing about it other than he doesn't have his, his driver's license. Let's talk about OKC's draft um, because they had a million picks and some. I am... I would say somewhat worried because I I fear, how do I say this? When you, when you have this many young people on the team, you have this many people that you have to develop, you're going to not be able to do it. And I don't want to I don't want to sound like a jackass and I might be sounding like one anyway. You just have so many young players that are incomplete products that are trying to find who they are as basketball players. So now we got Usman Dang, we got Chet Holmgren, we got uh, Josh Giddy, we got this player, we got that player, we got this player. All of those guys are going to have to develop one way or another in the best way to develop in the game of basketball and NBA level basketball is to play the game. But you also have four people at the same position. I'm just saying, you have so many people that are can play the same position. How do we decide this is the guy we want to focus on developing? And now we have a dude that had all the potential in the world, but since we didn't prioritize his potential, prioritize his progression, he don't had a career that he might have been able to have if he went to some other organization. That's the only thing I'm a little bit afraid of. This, the way they're doing things is so unnatural to us or a son, uh, so unnormal to us that maybe it works out in four years. May, maybe it doesn't, but it's, I just have to see a little bit more of their rebuild and their progre- progressing of these players before I make a decision. I mean, their idea is throw as many shots at the dartboard as you can, and you're going to hit a bullseye eventually. But again, these are still humans that were, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't know. Oh, yeah, they had Jalen Williams, too. And if I'm not mistaken, they also had Jalen Williams. Didn't they get both Jalen Williams? Oh, they did. No, they got both. They got both of them. They got the guy from Arkansas, too. So they got both Jalen Williams. So now you're about to have that barrier. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, overall, the draft was cool. I was just hoping for a little bit more. Before I end here, I wanted to go to the subreddit of some of the teams. Now, there's one team in particular um, that made some moves um, that in, in real time, it felt kind of weird. But now that we look it back on it, maybe not so much. Um, and it was the New York Knicks trading out of their pick. Uh, they traded down and then traded for Jalen Duran and then traded Jalen Duran and Kimball Walker to Detroit to free up money. This is what people are expect, uh, uh, speculating. 
to free up some money to get Jalen Brunson. And I know a New York Knicks fan. My my um cousin Pierre is a Knicks fan, and he was very confused in the moment. So I want to go to the Knicks subreddit just to see how the New York Knicks fans are holding up. I would guess now because I'm recording this at midnight. You know, we're a couple hours um removed from that. You know, you know, you go through those stages of grief. There's like denial, anger, and boom, 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 boom. They're probably in the acceptance place now. Um, but I'm just I'm just curious. Rick Brunson convincing Leon his son is worth 120 M's. That's a good meme. That's 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 a seven and a half out of ten. Um, I am an authorized meme rater, by the way. So this is this is what I mean. Okay, sounds like Ivy is staying put. Durant is going to Detroit, and the Pistons take the contract of Kemba and give up on the pick. Okay, so top comment. This is what we're here for. Pistons flee fleece the leash. Shout out to Troy Weaver, by the way. People were thinking that I was in the front office because Troy Weaver was getting assets and flipping them. You love to see it. Nightmare coughing up blood. This is uh, severely underwhelming. If it's just to clear up Cap's face for Brunson or some some other words that we're not gonna say because we like to say monetize. They weren't very happy. This is like the worst case scenario though. This guy, this fan says that he hopes that the Mavs put their foot down and say uh, no to this talking about the Jalen Brunson pursuit but if they do if they if you did all of this to free up money for Jalen Brunson and Jalen Brunson just resigns with the uh with the Dallas Mavericks then what is option b what is what is the backup plan that's the question is backup plan trading for Kyrie Irving you know what I'm assuming based on no nothing at all y'all know I ain't got no connections in the game of basketball if they don't this is crazy that priority number one will be Jalen Brunson and priority number two will be Kyrie Irving but I would guess that if you strike out on Jalen Brunson, you're like, okay, we'll be the team to take Kyrie. Based on nothing. Because Kyrie Irving had a list, and the Knicks were on that list. So that's one thing. You got pick equity. You got three goddamn first-round picks for trading the picks that you had today. So you got those picks. You have one more pick from the Dallas trade, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and you have your own picks. You got some younger assets. So some of them you don't want to move in a Kyrie Irving trade for sure because his value shouldn't be that high anyway. But I'm just I'm just saying. Option two, trade for Kyrie. Either way, um... Uh, I need to pick out my favorite prospect in this draft. I will say I don't have a good track record, but I did have Evan Mobley as my top guy last year. But I mean, it was like everybody knew that Evan Mobley is going to be good. Nobody just knew how good he was going to be. So that's like one hit that I had. Alperin Sengun was a guy pre-draft that I really like. Um, uh, Usman Garaba, still time to tell on that one. So I got some hits. I got some misses. But I definitely, I'm going to be honest with you, I got more misses than hits when it comes to this stuff. Because like I said, I really like Daniel Dia going into the 2020 draft. And I also like Killian Hayes. So, Kenny don't know a damn thing. Again, Sekou Dembuya. I knew it was one that I absolutely bombed. Sekou Dembuya was that guy. Um, I like projects. What can I say? I, I like a good project because if you do it correctly and that guy ends up being a, being a stud, well, you got a job for the rest of your life. Shea Gears Alexander was one that I picked too, and I hit on that one. But like I said, I got more misses than hits. So, let me figure out who my favorite prospect is based on not knowing a damn thing. I'm going to pick up two lotteries and then two post lotteries, and then we're going to end the video. Did I say anything of value today? Hell no, but thank you for watching. I think I'm taking Dyson Daniels because I want him to be good, because I like the Pelicans core so much. I'm taking Dyson, and I hope he's going to be a stud. I, that picture of Zion from a couple days ago got me excited to watch bro back on the court, and if Dyson's the one passing it to him, I'm a fan. Something tells me that Jeremy so 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 Chan, so Chan is going to be a stud. I, have not, I don't know a single thing about him, but he got drafted to the Spurs, and he's a big wing. I think he's probably gonna be a stud, but I'm not. I'm not picking him because I haven't seen a single second of him. Give me, give me Usman Jang. I said all of that about OKC not having enough time to develop all these dudes. He's a thin, wired frame guy overseas. I like foreign-born players. I take him in the lottery as well. Outside the lottery, you know who I'm going with? 18th overall pick, Dalen Terry. I actually heard some really good things about Dalen Terry before the draft, before he was a bull. Um, that makes me excited now that he is here. Will he be a stud? Only time will tell. He said in his pre-draft workouts that. We're going to have a redraft of this draft in 10 years, and he's going to be significantly higher. And I love to hit that, man. I love a player like that. Oh, it's 100% Davey Roddy. David Roddy? Rowdy? Come on, man. How can I not root for a dude that's 6'4", 260, and actually is very, very good at basketball? That's what I'm taking. Let's get one second rounder. It is G G G Gabriel Proceda. Pro because you know what? He had a video that went semi-viral of his draft day workouts here in Chicago. And somebody quoted it and said that he was the Italian Zach Levine. I like Zach Levine, you know? So I'm curious to see if that turns out to be true. Obviously, the guy was joking. But, you know, he had some bounce. He was hitting his jump shots. And he looks like a project. And I like projects. But he got, he got drafted to the Blazers, too. So they took two relatively unknown players in this year's draft. 
They going boom a bus, and I respect it. 